1996's Rebound, The Legend of Earl the Goat. Welcome back to Streetball Strategies Basketball Movie Reviews. So I saw this movie in the late 90s. It came out in 96, I probably saw it about 98. And I've seen it a few times. And for those of you who are familiar with the main videos on this channel, this channel's all about becoming and building your own basketball legend, building your basketball legacy. One of the reasons for those videos to exist, this channel to exist, is because of this player, because of this actual movie. I had not thought of that or remembered that before I watched this movie, but as I watched it, I remember, yeah, this is a compelling story to me. The fact that Earl the Goat Manigault was never a popular college player playing on highly televised college games or even an NBA All-Star where everybody would know his name because of that. It's just the fact that he had such talent and skill and ability on the parks of Harlem when he was growing up that his legend has just trickled down through the generations. People today all around the world know of the GOAT. They know of his legacy. They know of his name. They may not know particulars about him, but there are people in Switzerland, people in China who know of Earl the GOAT Manacle. There are 20-somethings, teenagers today that know of his legacy all around the world. They have no business knowing who he is. He was playing in his prime in the 60s in Harlem and he's known in Australia. And he never played any highly televised college games. He was never an NBA All-Star. There's no reason anybody outside of Harlem should know his name, but people all around of all ages know him. So when I'm talking about basketball legend, basketball legacy, this is kind of the standard bearer of that. This is kind of what I'm talking about when I say build your legacy, become a legend. Earl the Goat Manigold is kind of the embodiment of that. And it's something that we all should be striving towards. So this is the story of the rise and fall of the legend of Earl the Goat Manigold. Him being a legendary, building his legend on the streets and parks of Harlem playing basketball to becoming addicted to drugs and then getting his life back together afterwards. The cast of this movie is beautiful. It's done wonderfully. The acting is amazing in this movie. This is my first time seeing Forrest Whitaker in a movie. It's also my first time seeing Don Cheadle in a movie. Even recently when he's done the Marvel movies, when he's done the Iron Man movies, the Avengers movies, every time I see him, even to this day, as soon as I see Don Cheadle on the screen, the first thing I think in anything that he does is, well, that's the GOAT. He's the GOAT. <laughs> and I, I like that. I think that's kind of cool that as a basketball fan, whenever I see that guy, I just think Earl the Goat Manigal. One of my first thoughts as I was watching this movie again was this is shot beautifully. The cinematography in this movie, especially compared to the rest of the movies that we've done so far on this list, this is a beautifully shot movie. You can tell from the very beginning, you can tell that they put a lot of thought, a lot of care and consideration to how they were going to make this movie. Everything about it is thought out so well and done so well, presented to us so well. I'm, I'm a huge fan of how this movie turned out. But there are a few problems here and there that, that I want to address. One is Yes, this movie was made for television. I think it was made by HBO for HBO. So even though it was made for television, it was made for a, a pay cable station. It wasn't made for like CBS, you know. And for the most part, it looks really good. It feels really good. But because it was the 90s and because it was made by a television company, there are parts in the movie where it does kind of feel like a made-for-TV kind of movie. As far as the basketball in the movie, it is great. It's done great. The play is great. It's shot very well. Uh, you feel like you're watching real 
street basketball players at the park competing. When he's playing high school games, you feel like you're watching high school players play high school ball. It feels really good. It looks really good. But there is a, uh, a, a kind of a problem, and, and, and it may be me nitpicking, but I can't help but to notice that so one of the major aspects of Earl the Goat Manigold's uh, legend is that he's a legendary high jumper. And of course they have to demonstrate this in the movies. So the way they do this is they shoot Don Cheadle. They'll do him in a game uh, playing basketball, getting ready to dunk the ball. And you will see a full body shot of Don Cheadle and he'll be in the jumping motion. So you'll see him getting ready to jump. You'll see him jump and leave the ground and then the very next shot is a close-up on him dunking the ball at the rim. But there were a couple shots, two or three instances where the cut between the full body shot of him jumping and the close-up of him dunking was a little poorly timed in that you will see the full body shot of him getting ready to make the jump. He'll jump, he'll get to the apex of his jump and that's where the cut should happen so that you see the close up of him actually dunking. The problem is you see him jump, you see him reach the apex and then before the jump happens you see him start to fall just a little bit. You see, you start to see the decline of his jump just a little bit which takes you out of the movie because you notice that he's not actually flying through the air like the legends say that he does. So that actually takes you out of the movie a little bit because it reminds you that oh yeah Don Cheadle isn't actually the goat. He can't actually jump any higher than the average person. It's just Don Cheadle. And while that may be a small nitpicky kind of thing it happens two or three times in the movie and one of the big selling points is that Earl could jump out of the gym and when you see Don Cheadle jumping at the average height of the average man, it, it's kind of distracting. My third and only real issue with the movie is that the movie is about 110 minutes long. Uh, the first 55 minutes of the movie are sort of telling the backstory and the, and the legacy of how Earl became so legendary as a basketball player. The next 45 minutes have to do with his drug addiction. And then the last 10 minutes are all about him getting his life together and his sort of redemption as a person. I would have liked to seen another 5 or 10 minutes of his sort of redemption story of him sort of getting his life back in order. I would have liked to seen a little bit more time dedicated to that part of the story, seeing him uh, become the new kind of Holcomb Rooker and, and helping out the, the kids and the youth of Harlem. Uh, through his actions and his redemption, I would have liked to see more of that. But the way it was presented in the movie was was good. I just I would have liked to see more of it. So is Rebound: The Legend of Earl the Goat a good movie? Yeah, it's definitely a good movie. Uh, I think it's a good movie in general, even without the great basketball scenes that it has in it. But the the basketball does help to you know elevate it even more, obviously, with him being a basketball legend. But just in general, I think this is a good story. Does the movie do what it's trying to do? Does it tell the legend and the story of Earl the Goat Manigault well? I think it really does. Uh, I, I really appreciate the fact that there's a movie dedicated to a streetball legend like this who wasn't famous at all. He wasn't a big time college player or NBA player and yet this movie was so caringly carefully made to honor him and his legacy that I, I think they really did a good job. Should you see it, do you need to sort of experience it? This is the first time I'm giving this question a hard yes. You definitely should see this. You're watching this because you're a basketball fan. That's the assumption. And because of that, basketball people should see this movie. They should know this legacy. They should know this guy and his contribution to street 
Park basketball. You need to know this. For those of you who saw my earlier review of The Basketball Diaries, this movie is comparable to that in that they're both kind of cautionary tales that say this basketball player had potential to be great, then he got associated with drugs and addicted to them, and because of that, you know, his his potential went down the drain as a as a basketball player and competitor. The difference between Rebound and The Basketball Diaries is that Rebound is a much more balanced movie, right? The, the Basketball Diaries is just about the downfall of Leo DiCaprio in that movie. It's a story that everything is terrible. All your off-the-court life is terrible. Thus, you get uh, caught up in the life of drug addiction. And there's really no positives in that movie except for kind of at the end where he doesn't die of drug overdose and he gets his life together at the very end. But in Rebound you have characters such as uh, the goat's mother her or mother figure. I'm not actually sure what her relationship to him is but she is like a mother figure to him and she is always trying to help him and being positive with him and trying to make sure he's getting his life in order and staying on the right track. Then you have Forrest Whitaker playing Holcomb Rucker who kind of mentors him in a, in a basketball sense. He helps get Earl to private school where he can get his academics together, he can get away from the dangers of Harlem and really focus on basketball. And then you have the girlfriend he meets while he's at private school and she's another positive force in his life and eventually she gets pregnant they have a son and now and now Earl wants to be a better person because of having a son and, and being a father so you have all this balance for all of the bad stuff that's happening to Earl in this movie whereas in the basketball diaries it was just everything was just bad and terrible the entire time where in this movie it's more balanced because you have positives that are trying to weigh in on all the negatives that are happening in Earl's life all that taken into account I'm gonna give rebound the legend of Earl the goat a B plus it's a very good movie it's not perfect there are some negatives that can be taken into account while watching it so because of that I give it a B plus but you definitely should see it even though it's not a perfect movie. Like I said this was the first movie I saw that had to do specifically with street ball basketball legends and because of that it's, it's very special to me and I really do encourage you to seek this movie out and to watch it. It's, it's a really good movie. It's not perfect but as hardcore street ball basketball fans you will love this movie. So that's my review of 1996's Rebound, The Legend of Earl the Goat, starring Don Cheadle. Thank you guys for watching. I really do hope you see this movie. You won't regret it. It's a great basketball movie. It's a great movie in general. If you guys like this review, please give me a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so you're notified of all my future videos as we count down or up or whatever this list of Esquire's best basketball movies list. I believe next week's movie is Above the Rim and to me again that's another special basketball movie so I'm excited to do that review. So make sure you hit that notification bell so you're notified of when that video goes live and I will see you guys then. We each champs dog did it right. Trust you wanna play bring your ball in your nights let's go.